Hello and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about how you can use the data from Google Analytics for business intelligence in order to make informed decisions and stay one step ahead of your competition. You can start by creating a Google account and having your web developer install a few lines of a tracking code. Once you've got the tracking code installed, you sit back and let the data accumulate. You can set up automatic reporting so that every week you get a PDF file in your email inbox showing you this data as it accumulates. Now at the top of this dashboard report that you're going to receive, you've got a few of the top line metrics. This is the number of visits we've got in a given time period. That is a unique visit to your site by anybody. The page views number underneath that indicates how many total pages have been looked at. And therefore, of course, you get a pages per visit, which gives you some indication of how, how likely people are to go dig deep into your site and look more beyond the front page and at some of the content that lies beneath. Moving over to the right-hand side, we see a statistic called bounce rate. This measures the amount of times that somebody will come to your site and immediately leave without looking at anything and helps the site owner understand if they need to do something different in order to retain those visitors they've worked so hard to acquire. Underneath that, average time spent on the site, by way of a cookie installed uh, by the browser, a clock will start as soon as the visitor arrives and the clock keeps on ticking until the person either leaves this site or they close their browser altogether. As a result, the owner of the website can see how long they're able to hold the person's attention. And underneath that, finally, percent of new visits. Again, using a cookie, the browser will be able to tell if the person has visited this site before. And by separating new from repeat visits, this helps site owners understand what they need to do. For instance, if they're launching a new product or have new content to show off on the website or are trying to engage new customers, there are new tactics to try to keep this number high and get in front of all of these new visitors. So once you've got a top level look at all of this traffic, how do you then break it down and really begin to understand it? It starts by breaking it into these three main categories of traffic. There's direct, referral, and search engine traffic. Direct traffic measures the times when Somebody will type your website address or URL directly into their browser and pull up the site that way. This is a good reflection of your word of mouth, your grassroots marketing, anything offline like billboards or print ads. It's very difficult to accumulate over time, but it's uh, very important to be able to isolate it from other kinds of traffic. Referral traffic is anything in which an external website links to your site and brings you visitors through that link. So it could be clients, it could be suppliers, business partners, but it might also be the news media or trade organizations or even bloggers, anybody who is sending you visitors who began at their site and end up on yours. Finally, there's search engine traffic. This is pretty obvious. All of the search engines out there, there's Google, there's Yahoo, MSN, Ask. There are many, many search engines out there. And any time that one of them sends a visitor your way, it will be logged as a search engine visit. So you're probably saying to yourself, great, so search engines are accounting for most of the new visits to my site. Now, can I look and see even more detail? Well, of course you can. If you want to click on that, you'll see now a list of all of the major search engines sending visitors to your site. This one happens to be ranked by visits, and of course, Google, not surprisingly, is number one. But you can also see a lot of those metrics that we saw before on the dashboard report, the pages per visit, the average time, and so on. Also, along the top around here, you can see that the site total is 59%. That's total search engine visits. And now, pages per visit, they will compare the search engine pages per visit compared to the site-wide pages per visit. So this negative 2.89% indicates that visitors from search engines visit slightly fewer pages on average than the average site visitor. 
very useful to know. Now these are small numbers, but over here, 7% new visitors, this might allow you to say that your search engine marketing and specifically your search engine optimization is bringing in new visitors at a higher rate than some of your other efforts. And if this is important to you, you now have new options for how to pursue this and make this number even higher. You might also compare Yahoo to Google, higher pages per visit, longer time spent on the site, more new visits, and a lower bounce rate. These might be an indication that Yahoo overall is a better target for some of your search engine marketing. Of course, you want to look at the statistical significance of this number, and, and with Google being significantly higher by many orders of magnitude, you might decide that these numbers are trivial. Maybe you're not so focused on one search engine versus another, but rather on the actual keywords that are driving that traffic. Here we're looking at a keyword list of all search queries sending traffic to the ClickSharp blog ranked by total visits. You'll see that the search query ClickSharp marketing is the number one. Now for a branded keyword, these are people that already know the ClickSharp name. Not surprisingly, that's a high number of pages per visit because they have likely to have an interest in the company. If you go a little further down, internet marketing is a more abstract keyword, therefore lower pages per visit. Now as much as we love our clients and partners, these are useful to us because it means we're bringing in people who don't already know ClickSharp. And if you go down the list, you'll see that there is a nice long tail full of very, very specific, unique keywords, sometimes five, six, seven words long. So there are lots of ways to look at this data. This shows geography. You can see the sites that are sending you referral traffic. You can even look at the pages on your site that are the most popular. You wanna learn more about your users. You can see the operating system they're using, even the, how fast their connections are. Eventually, we'll even talk about how to track user behavior, such as this example, sending email direct from the site. Ready for the best part? Think about how much money corporations spend every year on market research to generate the same kind of business intelligence, and then consider what Google is asking for its Google Analytics product. The answer is it's completely free. How is it possible that a product like this could be free? Well, Google Analytics is so useful in generating efficacy from Google AdWords advertising campaigns. Not only is it in their best interest to offer this product for free, but they're even willing to train people on how to use it and how to make best use of some of its features. So search engine marketing agencies like ClickSharp thrive on this kind of relationship. It allows us to not only work more efficiently, but to extract the best possible results out of our clients' campaigns. And this is just one more example of how Google and many other companies are just turning conventional business models completely upside down. That wraps up the Google Analytics for Business Intelligence video. Hopefully you've learned a little more about how to leverage this data to help promote your website and ultimately your business. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. You can see other ClickSharp videos on YouTube by going to the search bar at the top and searching for ClickSharp Marketing.